All right, Shalom Amachyam, all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Harachapadash, double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akiyam out there who are doing the work of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, in truth, faith, and in sincerity. This is Brother Taz Pop back with another lesson. And, uh, you know, as you see here on your screen, it says that truth versus lies. And where this all comes from, I was just sitting here meditating. You know, as us as men of the Lord, we understand that, you know, we are embroiled in a war right now. And, you know, what I was meditating on is what is at the, the what is at the root cause of this war, you know? And, and even the scriptures say that most, the most high, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai is a man of war. You have all the, uh, a lot of the prophets. The men of the Lord, who who you know, they were rough men, but they would use a lot of war analogies. You know, especially in the New Testament, Paul he was big on using war analogies, such as Ephesians six, around eleven verse on down. He said that he stated that put on the whole armor of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know that we might resist the devil. Or let me get that real quick. But this is there is a war going on, and uh, that is where I pulled that title up. Now this is Ephesians six, as I said, and verse eleven. Put on the whole armor of God, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then he goes on, you know, breaking down each part of the armor. That you need to resist Satan. And so, yeah, I was just thinking, because if you was to ask one of these Mark mains, you know, the Christians in the church, they would say, yeah, the war is against good and evil. Which no, the most high, it tells you. Now, when you when you look at uh, like an Isaiah, uh, what is that? Okay, Isaiah 45 and 7. It says, and it's the most high, by the way, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So, seeing that the most high creates evil, the what wouldn't be against good and evil. And a perfect example of that is in the kingdom, I'm going to be very evil towards Edomites. And that's going to be a righteous thing. That's going to be righteous. So then one might say, well, then the war is against, you know, righteousness and wickedness. And that's true. Then that's what the battle is, is about. Righteousness versus wickedness. But now, what makes one righteous and what makes one wicked? And at the root of righteousness is truth. Just as the root of, of wickedness is lies. As when you look at the world, they, this world, these, these uh, heathens and two-thirds, they live a life of, of deceit and, and lie, lies. Because it's not according to the word. Now, okay, it's like the scripture speaks on uh, uh, there's a right way, which right e equates to truth. And when you're true, you're right. But then it, the, the scripture speaks of a false way. And what's another word for false is a lie. Wrong. So then we come back to this truth versus lies. Now, going back to the beginning, what set all this off? And then you begin to see and understand that, right, this battle is against lies with us. This battle is against lies with us. When I say us, I'm referring to, of course, the men of the Lord, his servants, the prophets. So let's go back and see what started it all out of the book of Genesis, chapter three and uh. I'm going to start at the top, verse 1. It says, now the serpent, and the serpent was a man who, who has 
serpent-like characteristics. He was sly. He was cunning. He was deceitful. So it says, now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field. And when you go in the subtile, it means under the tile. Sub, uh, uh, under the web, sub being under tile is like a web. So, right, he could, he could maneuver and do things through his craftiness and be unseen because he's under the web. He's subtile. It says, then any beast of the field which the Lord power had made. He said unto the woman, yea, had the most high said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we eat of the fruit of the, of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the most high has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, she stated truth right there. So, let's look at the reply of this serpent, this devil. In verse 4, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, which is what? A flat-out lie. Because Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah did indeed tell this Eve, you know, uh, Adam's wife, well, Adam and both of them, Adam and his wife, that the day that they eat of this, the fruit of this tree, that they would surely, that, it, that they would die. Now, let's go back and look at that. Uh, okay. This is Genesis chapter 2 and 16. And the Lord power commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I shall not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And Eve just reiterated that verbatim. Third chapter. And again, this is Genesis chapter 3 and uh, verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree, and this is Eve speaking, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the Most High said, has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. You know, so, right, here we find that the Most High gave a commandment, just as he did with the children of Israel, he gave commandments. And this is, this is where the righteousness used to stem from, which is being in line with the commandments of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, then you are what? In truth. See, Eve spoke truth because she was in alignment with what Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah said. Okay? Now, us, we know that our righteousness come from Yahweh Shah, but that's what? Our Yahweh Shah is, is what? In essence, he comes in the volume of this book. He is this very word. So, being in Yahweh Shah means being in line with this word, which is what the Most High spoke. So we, it still, you know, goes back to the same thing, being in truth. This is where our righteousness stems from. Now, now what Satan did, he shot that doubt, but that doubt came here in verse 4. By way of a lie. And again, verse 4 says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Which I find interesting because that's exactly what the Most High said. So, some type of way, maybe, well maybe, I'm going to just say maybe, maybe the serpent knew that the Most High had told him that. Because Eve only told him that uh, she said, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. Or ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. But then the serpent goes on to say, uh, ye shall not surely die, which is what Yahweh Shah told him. Yahweh Shah said, thou shall surely die. So where would, where would the serpent get that from, surely die? 
you know. But anyway, hey, that's not important. We're going to keep on with the topic. In verse 5, he said, For the Most High doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So then he just told another lie. He, he doubled down, told another lie, but he mixed it in with some truth. And, that, and they, they called Eve to bite. She ate of that fruit. She, Yeah, she, she partook of that fruit. She consumed it. You know, and the lie was in verse 5 that... Uh, that, that if we ate of it, we should be like gods. Because Adam was already a god. You know what I'm saying? But the truth was that, you know, that they would know good and evil. That was true. But the, he didn't have to eat of the fruit to be God. Adam was put on earth as a god. What were we known as? You know, even after Adam fell, we were known as the sons of God. So, if we were the sons of God, Adam had to be a God. But that was what? That's why the serpent couldn't come to Adam. He couldn't, he couldn't pull, pull the wool over Adam's eyes with that little weak, you know, logic. But that sounded good to Eve being of the weaker vessel. You know, it's like all women today. These things sound good to the, you know, they buy into America or Babylon. They buy into the fruit, still eating of that fruit, that same fruit that the serpent offered Eve. He's offering. So we know who the serpent is. And that's not for this lesson, but just to throw that out there, the serpent are you Edomites, the so-called white people. Well, they're still offering all women that fruit and they're still more than happy to consume it. Well, yeah, Adam was saying, you know, nigga, I'm already a god. Get your bitch ass up out of here. But that sounded good to Eve. She wanted, you'll have power over or be equal with your man, and you'll be able to make decisions and call shots and, and this, that, and the other. And so, you know, she bit on it, brought it to Adam. He, he fell for it because, you know, women have a certain power over, over that man. Or their men. But anyway, this is this is the beginning of our fall, which was caused by what? A lie. So to be risen again, to be brought back up, we have to come back to the truth. What do we always say? Beginning with the apostles on down. We're in this what? Truth. You know, we don't say I'm in this righteousness, which it is, but we don't say that, you know, it is righteousness and we are in it. But we don't say that. We say, you know, I'm in this truth. Because this is the essence of what we are about. Now, I find it interesting that the, the serpent, just as I, I mentioned, he's still offering that fruit, but he still employs those same MOs or methods of of operandi, modus operandi, those methods of operation still to this day, because when you read Revelation in 20, which applies to right, what this, this prof, prophecy I'm about to go into applies to right now. And it says here, uh, all right, it's Revelation 20 and uh, uh, Salakia. If I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you bear with me one second. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Revelation 20 and 7. It says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Those thousand years were the dark ages. Now, when the, the Edomite, the so called white man, came back into prominence, came back into power, he dubbed it the Renaissance, which means rebirth. Re back or again. Nasai goes back to nativity, which means birth. Renasai, you know, renaissance. So, you know, that was around, what, uh, 1300s, circa 1300s, renaissance. 
Esau, Edom, coming back into power, they was loosed out of their prison, which was being enslaved under Hebrew Israelites during the Dark Ages. Or, you know, what the scholars dubbed the Dark Ages, also uh, the Byzantine Empire, you know. So in verse 8 it says, And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters, four yeah, quarters of the earth, God and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So the point here is, when he came back into power, he went out to deceive, and that deception still goes on to this day. Now, one of the major things that we, all camps of GMS, and even the other camps, Hebrew Israelite camps, that we push is that that false image of who the Bible speaks of as Jesus, whose name in truth is Yahweh Hamasiach. You understand? Yahweh uh, He Deliverer, uh, He Salvation, and Masiach being the Messiah. All right? So, that was, that was one of the first things that came out of, you know, they they went and sought to uh, paint the likenesses of their image from out of the Bible, beginning with Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, the father and the son. Then, you know, all the patriarchs, all the disciples, everybody, as the scriptures sp speak of, these great men of faith, now they all resemble the Edomites. All right, but right, but because he had to go out and push those lies. You understand? He had to go out and lie because that's what his kingdom is based on. Because remember, with the fall of Adam came in, that ushered in the kingdom of Satan. The scripture tell you, Job 9 and 24, that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And that's through the fall of Adam. You understand? So his kingdom began with a lie, was based on a lie, built up upon lies. And so soon as he got back control of the earth, he had to go and reestablish re all of that. I am superior. You know, I am God. I am this, I am that, the great mighty Edomite. You know, and you so-called Negroes, African-Americans are inferior. Y'all need to be more like me, the white boy. And, and all people, are, well, all, all nations, they fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. All nations want to be like this white boy, but his kingdom was based on a lie. So to come back at, and I'm going I'm I'm to read. I'm going to go here first, dealing with Yahweh Shai and this war on the book of St. John. I'm going to go to 14 first, let us see it. Concerning Yahweh Shai, uh, St. John chapter 14, verse 6. Uh, it says, here we go. All right. Yahweh Shai said unto, unto him, I am the way, the truth. And the life. No man coming unto the Father but by me. But Yahweh Shai made a definitive statement about who he is and what he is about. He said, I am. You know, just like Yahweh told Moses, I am. But he didn't put no other, you know, monikers or no other adjectives with that. He said, I am because he is everything. He is all in all. So here you have shy. He's making a statement. He says that I am the way. Then he says what? The truth and the life. You know, so he is truth. Yahweh Shah is truth. 
And of course, the way and the life. He's the way to life. Where truth is the way to life, which is Yahweh Shah. That's why he stated that. There's no other way. You're looking for some some other, you know, flashy, uh, what's this word? Uh, glamorous, you know, some glamorous way to, you know, seek eternal life through these wayward doctrines and philosophy, these false ways, these lies. You're not going to find it. The only way is through truth. Now, this is also out of the book of St. John. When you go to the 8th verse, 8th chapter, Salakia, St. John chapter 8, and uh, let me see where I'm going to start at. Oh, yeah, 44. So St. John 8 and 44, ye of your father, the devil, which is Yahweh Shai, telling these wicked Israelites that. He was speaking to wicked Israelites. Saying, ye are of your father the devil. Now, who is he referring to? He's referring to these Edomites. You know? Who come under the, the, the power of the spiritual demon, Satan. But again, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And what? And abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. So there's no truth in him. So he can't, he, he, he can't have his power in the kingdom of truth. He can't give you truth if he wants to rule and reign. He has to go forth and deceive the nations. Put forth all these, these delusions and lies deceptions he has to do it it says uh he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him now get this it said when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it Right, the so-called white man. It ain't talking about uh, the spiritual demon, Satan, you know, the devil. It's talking about these 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 Edomites. This is who is this is who Yahweh Shah was referring to as being the devil and a murderer and and the father of lies. Because through a lie, they got their kingdom. So it's only through lies that they can sustain their kingdom. Now, with that being said, how do you combat that? Through truth, through Yahweh Hamasiach. You understand? It is the only way. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, this is more on. On, on Esau, out of the book of Job, chapter 13 and 4. It says, uh, Job, chapter 13, verse 4, But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. And this is again going to these Edomites. Let's see, uh, Yeah, come on, come on. So, yeah, let, let me see. Mm -hmm, come on, come on. But yeah, that, that, that's the point. That these, these devils, man, these Edomites, they are forges of lies and physicians of no value. And for us to uh, succeed and be victorious in this battle, we're going to have to remain and speak speak truth. You know, our righteousness is is comes from being true. 
And it's like I, I uh, brought up the example with, uh, you know, Eve. When you speak the things that Yahweh shall speak and you walk in those those ways, your conversation or anastrophe is on one accord with the word of the Most High, then you are true. You are a true person. And you do it truth. That, that, that's what makes you righteous. But when you stray from that way, is why the scriptures say, seek ye the old past. When you stray from that way, then you fall into mischief, wickedness, and, you know, that evil. Because going back to that, I, it's like y'all forgot to explain, evil means a bad time. That's all it means. And again, we're going to be wicked, I mean, evil in the kingdom, yes. Yeah, and not even toward Edom, toward all these heathens. They're going to have a bad time with us. But is that saying that we're wicked? No. See, and this is why, hey, going into etymology, what is etymon? Or etymology, truth study. See, we have to get into this etymology because just as this picture you see here, Esau disguises truth <laughs> or disguises lies as truth. And the major way he does it is through his language. So we have to cut through those barriers and, and you know, yeah, just go through, cut through all those barriers of language and, and through going, getting into etymon and the et etymology. Well, I say this, the et get, getting into etymology and the etymon of words to bring out truth, such as evil. See, now, if I didn't go into that, the etymon of the word evil, I would probably think, oh, yes, you know, this war is about good and evil. But no, we're going we're gonna to execute evil. <laughs> the scripture tells you we shall meditate terrors. What is, is terror nice? Is terror sweet and kind? Terror is evil. That's like a synonym for evil. Terror. When you terrorize someone, right, you're giving, you're giving them a bad time. But well, we're going to terrorize the nations. But, you know, none more so than Esau, Edom. But, you know, right. Is that to say we're going to be wicked? No. That does not, that does not make us wicked. We would, that, in, in fact, would make us righteous. You understand? Because we, we are in line with what the Most High stated. And at the end of the day, that's what righteousness is, man. And truth. Being, being true, uh, because that, the law, statutes, and commandments are our measure. That we should, you know, be measured up to or measured up against. And either you measure up to it or you don't. And if you do, you're right. You're righteous. If you don't, you're wicked and you're going to be destroyed. You're a lie. So, yeah, I'm going I'm to end it right there. I pray that your brothers edified. All praises, honor, and glory goes to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Mahasham, Harakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to all you Akyam who walk in truth, who, who 